Nostalgia. It is a very important and lucrative business in our society. We just have to look at movies, at TV shows, it's, it's everywhere. And it is, let us be honest, it is very especially present in our churches. Uh, many uh, in their pews these days are remembering or even envy what is called the golden ages. Uh, when uh, the, the, the pews were filled, when the Sunday school were exploding, when, when the churches uh, had the influence over the government. And many wish we could go back to that time. You know, to, to put more bombs in the pews and, and we uh, will have the money to do whatever we want. And as we read uh, from the book of the Acts of the Apostle and we get to chapter 4, we also sense this nostalgia. The author uh, wrote this book, according to scholars, something like 60 years after the death and resurrection of Jesus. And we cannot but have a feeling that the author was saying, well, the, these were the good years. These was the good times, the golden years, when every Christian uh, get together in unity, when early Christianity, everyone would share everything. There were no poverty. Everybody was taking for one and care for one another. And, and this is the ideal that we must strive for. If we have some sort of indication that it might have happened in Jerusalem, this sort of egalitarian and uh, communal com uh, community, uh, yes, it was embellished um, by the author. Yet it does not mean that we should dismiss this text completely. Because this text is essentially about a group of people who experience the resurrection, who experience the presence of the risen Christ. And it was a profound transformation uh, of their lives, this, this experience. And instead of deciding to go back to a former time when Jesus was alive, they see in the resurrection new life, a new way of being or relating to one another. And this community in Jerusalem is one way to answer it. And in today, uh, we church people face the same reality. Just a few days ago, we celebrated Easter. Maybe, I don't know in your context, but here there was special music, flowers, all those things special. And now, a few days after, we're tempted to move on to the next big holidays, next big event, a little like uh, retail stores. As soon as Christmas is over, bam, we're moved to Valentine's Day and moving forward. Or another option or another temptation a few days after Easter Sunday is to, well, on the Easter Sunday, like I said, there was so many people, maybe, and here there was people that we never saw before or only a few times, and we say, we saw this number said, oh, that was so great, and we need to, to bring them back so we can be as we were a few years ago, a few decades ago. If we can have one more program, one more tricks to bring them back, we will be as we were before. But by thinking this way, in, in both directions, we forget that resurrection is about new life. As the expressions say, dying to an old way in order to be reborn to a new one. So it's living in the present, not in the past, not some sort of future. Uh, no, it's living in the present. How we will live this good news of Jesus' resurrection today in our context, like the people in the fourth chapter of the Acts Apostle did it in their context. How how would it would show that we are resurrection people? How we will incarnate in our lives? That's the question we have to found. 
mosque. That's the kind of church we have to build for today's context, for today's reality. And that's the invitation we have as we're invited to live in this Easter season, in this Easter reality. Thank you once again for watching. I remain the lectionary man, Reverend Stefan Vermette. And until next time, take care of yourself and bye-bye.